Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Deep Sea Learning with Georgia Aquarium. My name is Olivia, and I'm with our education department here, and today we are going to learn about oil spills. All of the material you see in front of you is what we're going to use, and it can be found in your own kitchen or just by going to take a walk outside. We are going to create our own habitat and demonstrate the effects of what oil does to an entire ecosystem. Now, first, let's talk about what an oil spill actually is. When oil dumps into an environment, it's actually liquid petroleum being released. Now, this usually does happen in marine environments, so the ocean. Now, the big concern with oil spills is obviously the oil itself. It starts at the water surface and makes its way down into the environment and all the way to the coastlines, affecting everything in its path. This includes animals like birds, and it also affects plants, even their root systems. Oil will get on sand and pretty much everything else in its path. Now, oil actually also makes its way up the food chain, even affecting humans. Now, if we are ready, I'm going to introduce our activity and show you how we can build our own habitat and our own ecosystem and add oil to that mix to show really just the effects of an oil spill to a habitat. All right, so the next step is going to add everything to our marine environment here. We're gonna add our fur and our feathers to the island or to your coastline so they will be up on that rock. So the bigger the rock you have, the better. Now I'm gonna add the pine cones and the sticks and the pine straw and the leaves just kind of around the island since it's not quite large enough. But most importantly, we wanna put the animals, the fur and the feathers up on land. The next step is going to be adding our water. Now I have a very large bucket. The more water you use, the better. But you wanna make sure the water doesn't come up all over your island or your rock. You want it to be kind of like a beach. So the water's gonna come up to about halfway up to that rock. All right, so here we go. We're gonna add our water. Perfect. The last step is adding our oil. You don't need too much oil, and I'll show you about how much to pour in. So here we go. Now the oil spill does usually occur pretty far offshore, so that's why I'm pouring it on the far side of this bin. And we're gonna see just how long it takes for it to reach the coastline. All right. Now, as I mentioned earlier, before I started the activity, what happens to petroleum in the water at first is it remains at the surface. Now, after weeks after the oil spill, petroleum will actually sink down into the water col column, affecting all of the water column and marine life in the ocean. Now, all you have to do now is kind of wait for that oil to reach the coastline. My sticks and my pine cone are kind of acting as a barrier. That's why it's better to have the biggest rock you can find for your island. So the first thing I'm gonna ask everyone to do is just reach in and kind of feel how the oil is affecting the different materials, materials you have in the water. So we're gonna reach in and just kind of feel our sticks. You can see they're absolutely covered with oil. But luckily, because we didn't have enough, or have all the water, the fur and the feather did remain safe on the island. Now, what would happen though, is those birds and those safe mammals on land will actually go into the water because they don't know it's an unsafe environment. So what we can do is we can put our fur and our feathers in the water, and we're gonna see how that oil affects each of them. All right. So you can see just how much this feather is coated with oil. And this is exactly what happens to marine birds such as African penguins. Now this is the same thing with our fur here. It's absolutely coated with oil. Now the next part of our activity is we're actually gonna move to the cleaning and the cleanup side of the activity. Now in the real world, there's three different types of methods used to clean up oil. The first one is containment. So maybe this string, right? We're gonna try to block the oil from hitting the coastline. They use floating barriers called booms that actually absorb oil. This doesn't always work perfectly, but it is a type of method they try. The second method is chemical. They use chemicals to actually make oil more solid, so it's more easily removed. Now, the downside to using chemicals is you have to add chemicals to marine environments. The third and last way they clean up oil is the one we are going to try, and it's by physically removing 
the oil. So what we're gonna take today is we're actually gonna use our Dawn dish soap. Get a couple napkins handy and our sponge. So I left just a little bit of water in this bucket on purpose. Let's try our feathers first. So I have two feathers here that are covered in oil and we're gonna add some soap to our sponge. You can see the little birdies on the Dawn dish soap. That's what it's advertised for. So this is a physical method of removing oil, and this is what people actually do to animals. They are sitting out there and scrubbing their feathers, really trying to remove that oil from them. It takes a lot of hard and careful work when you're dealing with live animals that have been affected by oil. Try to get some water on it. So this is just one example of a cleaning technique. At home, I encourage you to try others. Try using the shampoo or the dish detergent, even laundry detergent, see what works best. Now I'm gonna leave it at that for a little while. And after you're done, there's a couple of things I want you to think of after you finish your own activity. What was the most difficult item to physically remove that oil? Was it the fur? Was it the feather? Maybe try the rock itself. This is something that people in the, in the real world have to deal with. It's not just the animals, it's the entire ecosystem that's affected by that oil. Now I hope all of you had a lot of fun in creating your own oil spill, and we learned about a couple different types of methods to clean our oil spill. If you didn't do it yet, I challenge you to do it at home or in your classrooms um, on a later date. Thank you everyone so much, and I hope you have a great rest of your day, and maybe we'll see you around at Georgia Aquarium.